All right. What is up, YouTube? It's Kari, and I'm back with another video. What's up, y'all? Uh, I don't think I be saying my name in the beginning of my videos, but my name is Kari. Zane, if you didn't know. <laughs> but no, nah, my name is Kari. And Zane's my middle name, if you wanted to know. But this video is not about my name, actually. This video is going to be more about... uh. Gender euphoria. Do y'all know what that is? Gender euphoria is something that helped me validate my trans self. It helped me identify with my self. Gender euphoria. That whole word. And put the cherry on top. Because prior... Prior to me medically transitioning and even starting my transition, when I was just learning about the trans community and questioning myself and questioning, like, is this who I am? Um, of course, everyone talked about gender dysphoria. They always talked about dysphoria, dysphoria, dysphoria. You got to have this much dysphoria. You got to have like this much dysphoria. And you got to have like a whole bunch of dysphoria. Your dysphoria, you got to be like this wide. You got to be about this big. You got to be about this tall. got to be about this thick. You got to be this close to killing yourself to be trans. So <laughs> that's the way that they described dysphoria. Like from the people that I was watching. Now, this was years ago before we had uh, all the different uh, content creators like we have now. We still have way more than we had like four or five years ago. Um, and of course, we only saw the white content creators. I hate to say it, but I'm sorry. I only saw white trans content creators. I just now started seeing black content creators as of like 2020. <laughs> no, yep. I think I... No, no, no. I saw Jason. That was it a couple years ago. But I, there wasn't that many black content creators. Um... But now, like, I'm I'm just starting to see a lot more of them, which is, I'm glad. Black trans content creators. I'm sorry. Um, I'd be skipping over my words. But, of course, people only really just talked about gender dysphoria and how much gender dysphoria you had to be trans. Like, that was a big argument at the time in the trans community is dysphoria and whether... You have to have dysphoria to be trans or whether you don't have to have dysphoria to be trans. Now, me, I was stuck in the middle because I had dysphoria, but I ain't have that much. Like, I have dysphoria, but it was like the way that they described dysphoria, I had it, but I don't think I had enough of it. At one point, I didn't think I had enough dysphoria to be trans. Um, So that was a big thing for me. Cause it's just kind of like, okay, you're just doing this just because, or you're doing this just, you know, it was, it was a big argument with that. So when I found out what gender euphoria mean, it just, it really helped validate and answer a lot of my own questions and it helped validate my own self. So let me just read y'all the definition of what, if you don't know what gender dysphoria is or gender euphoria is, let me just read you the words read you the uh definition because I, I wrote down i wrote down both of them these are the google definitions so don't jump down my throat if you don't agree with it go take it up from google because this is like straight from google all right so so gender dysphoria is a term described describes is a term that describes a sense of unease of a mismatch between their biological sex and their gender identity so that's what gender dysphoria is. I'm pretty sure everybody know what that means. Gender dysphoria is uh when you just are uneasy about the gender that you're in. Um you don't really identify with it. So a lot of people talked about gender dysphoria a whole lot. Um they 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 just felt they the way they described it, the way people um the way other people in the trans community described it, the people that I was watching, um, they described it as being like not even wanting to being uncomfortable in your own skin, which, of course, I could relate to that. Um, but it's to a certain extent. I, 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 my dysphoria wasn't that bad to the point to where that um, I'd, you know, go as far as um, 
killing myself. Because that's the way they were putting it. Like, I'm sorry. They was putting it like that. They was putting it to the point, like, either I transition or I die. Even though it would really be hard for me to imagine my life without hormones. But it was just it was just so strong that the way they put gender dysphoria, they put it like it was just like the end of the world. So, um, yeah, so gender euphoria is the positive homology of dysphoria. So it's, it means that in a positive way. So gender euphoria is the positive homology of dysphoria. A distinct enjoyment or satisfaction caused by the correspondence between the person's gender identity and the gender features associated with a gender other than the one signed at birth. So gender euphoria, that's basically you just you just find satisfaction and enjoyment in doing things that typically the other gender does or wearing things or being in association with things that the other gender opposite from the one you were assigned at birth. So that's what that mean. Um, you Gender euphoria. I can give you all some examples of gender euphoria because I experienced a whole lot of that growing up. I think I experienced more gender euphoria than I do gender dysphoria. So um, I really I really like the word gender euphoria. I really do like the word gender euphoria. I think it's a term that we need to use more. Uh, to validate ourselves um, more and to, you know, come in to, uh, to identify with ourselves more because euphoria is, 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 a, is a more positive way to look at your transition. But some examples of gender euphoria, of course, is the dress up game. Uh, wearing, wearing male clothing, of course, was the first thing for me. Um, on top of doing things, now, Wearing male clothing was one of the first things, but also I experienced gender euphoria growing up when I would do things that weren't associated with the gender that I was assigned at birth. So basically, one of the examples is when I would play outside um, and get like, I would play outside and I'd play rough, rough, rough. And I do, I just did things that um, typically little boys would do. My bad, my legs itching. And those things were like things that just gave me gender euphoria and I didn't even know it was stuff like climbing trees. When I would climb trees, I felt powerful. I just, <laughs> I felt powerful climbing trees. I feel like I can accomplish the world. <laughs> and I also, it also just, um, like I said, gave me gender euphoria. But it, if, if y'all get where I'm coming from, like back then I did not know that this was giving me gender euphoria because I was doing something that wasn't associated with the gender that I was assigned at birth. So while this satisfaction is going on, I don't even know that it's going on, but my body is just responding. So when I would do things like climb trees or I would literally, me and my friend, we would go mud riding on bikes. That's some country stuff. <laughs> we would go mud there's there's this trail back behind our house and we would go mud riding on bikes and i would go put on my brother's um my brother had these like steel toe boots um and they you know them long boots that come like all the way up to your ankle they waterproof and they steel toed i would go put them on and we would get on a mongoose bike and ride it through the mud it would never really make it but hey it was worth a try so we would just get on a bike and spin out and do stuff like that and I would get really really like muddy and dirty and I'd have to like literally take a shower outside then go inside and take a shower <laughs> so doing stuff like that um gave me satisfaction it gave me satisfaction playing rough you know what I'm saying um and I didn't even I didn't even know that was giving me um that type of satisfaction also one time when I was younger uh, we were, I think we were picking up wood where my, my dad had like chopped up some wood or a tree or something like that. And we were trying, taking the wood from the shed to the, um, putting it in the fireplace and I would pick up the wood. Now, most of the time, you know, 
a, a being at the time a little girl would just you know get out the way and let the guys handle that me no no give me some wood to carry <laughs> so i would pick up the wood and just take it in the house and that was one of the things that i did that just i just remember being that type of i remember feeling satisfied from doing that because i, I it gave me satisfaction but i didn't even i ain't even you know i couldn't identify with that back then so after just doing things that were associated with the other gender it it came to the point to where i became i started dressing up now me and my brother we used to play this game called fake life there was like three characters it was a mom and two sons and then he had like he had like uh i don't know it was just some characters but he had like a tower we were rich people basically and basically like i remember playing the role as a mom when when they were like little because i had like teddy bears or whatever but more than anything i remember playing the roles of the sons and that's where I, I used to dress up as a boy and play out those roles. So that was very satisfying for me. Very, very satisfying. I would play out those roles of the guys or whatever. So um, that was another thing that gave me euphoria. But so uh, dressing dressing as a man gave me uh gender euphoria that was one of the things that gave me uh euphoria dressing up that's where the wearing the male clothes came from is um wearing male clothes and i used to act out those characters or whatever but wearing male clothes gave me gender euphoria back then but uh yeah but now the things that really give me gender euphoria uh coming on up see that was back when i was little but uh as i became of age things that gave me gender euphoria of course was getting um wearing male clothing but when i when i first got my hair cut um i, I used to get lineups um i had a big afro and i used to get my hair lined up like huey off of uh the boom dogs like that's literally how my hair used to be like how huey had the huge afro huge nappy ass afro but, but and, and he only had his stuff lined up that's exactly how my hair used to look so i had the same cut so haircuts gave me gender euphoria that's when i tapped into that this is when i knew that i got euphoria from dressing and doing things that are associated with um being a male um, dressing as a male and getting haircuts. Another thing that gives me gender euphoria is wearing cologne. Wearing cologne, wearing male deodorant um, definitely gives me euphoria. Now, uh, yeah, wearing male cologne, uh, using male body products, definitely give me gender euphoria the basics you know what i'm saying that definitely gives me gender euphoria um another thing is that give me uh gender euphoria are girls yes girls give me gender euphoria certain times and this this was just recently now this right this one right here was recent Lately, girls have been giving me a lot, boosting my gender euphoria through the roof because girls see me as a dude now. What I've been wanting my whole life. <laughs> a lot of the times, a lot of females see me as a guy now, especially the ones that I be talking to, like the ones I'm trying to like talk to, they automatically see me as a dude so that it just enhances my gender euphoria. So we got clothes, we got cologne, we got girls, we got being active, like playing outside and stuff. All those things give me gender euphoria. My gender euphoria weighs out my gender dysphoria. That definitely means I'm transgender. 
So I always said to people who ask the question, if I don't have gender dysphoria, does that make me not trans? No, you don't even need dysphoria, but just make sure you have euphoria. Now, if you have gender euphoria, you find it euphoric or you find satisfaction or enjoyment and identifying as something that's other than what you were assigned as, then you are trans. That's my definition of being trans. So that's 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 how I look at the whole gender euphoria thing. And I just think that gender euphoria is very, very important to the trans community. And I don't think it's talked about that much. Like, I, I just don't think that gender euphoria is talked about that much. It is very important to me. And it's very important to uh, the community and that the youth know that more than anything, more than anything to identify to help identify uh what being trans is people throw throw around that gender dysphoria word so much it's really the word that needs to be used is gender euphoria if you find some type of satisfaction or enjoyment in doing things that were that are op opposite of what you were assigned or that aren't associated with what you were assigned at birth then that could possibly mean that you're trans, um, especially if you f find some type of alignment of what with the gender you were assigned at birth. But I just think that gender euphoria is a better term to use in the trans community than gender dysphoria, um, because gender dysphoria, it, ha it just has such a negative impact around it. And it just makes being trans about insecurities and discomfort and uh all of those things when that's not even what being trans is about being trans is more about you know uh being feeling whole feeling complete um sometimes we don't always feel complete in who we are we feel like there's something missing or there's something that needs to be there or there's something that needs to be gone and need to be there so yeah but i hope y'all enjoyed this video I just know I was all over the place. Forgive me. I tried. But thank you for watching. Thank you for giving me time out of your day. I really appreciate a lot of y'all that watch me and that talk to me. I love coming on here and sharing my um, thoughts and ideas with y'all because I know y'all can resonate with them because, of course, we're all trans, are we not? But if you're not trans, I still love you for being here. Um, you obviously want to be educated on trans topics. So thank you for watching. I hope y'all like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't, oh well. I mean, I really don't care. But yeah, I'm out of here. I hope y'all have a blessed day. Gang.